Welcome to the Eric Brady Podcast, Series 1, Adolf Hitler, His Bombers and Me. Episode 17, The Bombing of Sandhurst Road School. Eric, you've been back in London for four months after being evacuated for three years. Tell us what happened then. It was a cold day on January the 20th, 1943, when a big raid was being built up over France of German uh, fighter bombers and fighters. And they would do a sweep across uh, the south uh, coast ports and they would attack towns, shipping, harbours uh, along the south coast. While one raid went along in one direction, heading west, another raid took place uh, heading towards London and the Thames. And so the fighter defences were split in the two directions. Suddenly, from the major raid heading west, fighter bombers and fighters suddenly dived down heading towards London. And for a reason that has never been properly explained, all the barrage balloons were down in a straight line from that part of the south coast right into London. An inquiry was held and it was said publicly that um, essential maintenance was necessary on the balloons. And so they were all close hauled at that particular time on that particular day. So there were many newspaper inquiries and in Parliament as to why on earth were all of them pulled down in a straight line from the coast. It was later put out that a new radar system was being installed and so they had to be all close hauled to give a clear run free of those kind of obstacles. When I was talking later to a radar specialist, uh, he said that that in fact would have been nonsense for testing radar like that. So I don't really know why they were down in that line, but they were. And that meant that the aircraft could come in very low and very fast, which was the usual type of thing with this particular ground attack squadron that came in on this raid. They would go across um, the channel to attack uh, harbors and so on in small raiding groups. And uh, these were specialist ground attack uh, squadrons. They flew over Biggin Hill Aerodrome where the fighter pilots were actually just sitting down to lunch. They immediately dashed to their aircraft to get the planes on the way back because it, they would never have time to get up and attack them before they carried out their attack. And that fighter bomber force it said attacked six schools in that particular part of South East London. And it was only one school that was hit, Sanders Road School. I later went to another school, Brown Hills Road School, and I was taken out uh, to a field behind the school and I was shown a big bomb crater. And the boy who took me there said that that was a plane that had dropped the bomb uh, on January the 20th, 1943. With Sandhurst Rose, though, the uh, particular fighter uh, bomber that came into attack was um, piloted by a Capitan Schumann, who later broadcast that evening on German radio, saying what a great raid it had been, and every bomb had hit its target. In fact, if they were going for the six schools, as was said, the others were all near misses. It was only Sandhurst Road that was actually bombed. These Jabbo raiders, as they were called, um, would normally go in low and fast, climb up to 500 feet to drop their thousand pound bomb and uh, then dive away quickly. On this occasion, the Jarrow pilot, so it was said, flew over the school, would have seen the large number of children playing in the playground 
they were more in that playground than usual because <clears throat> they were to go on um, a coach trip uh, to see A Midsummer Night's Dream, a play in London. And so there were more children assembled there than usual. And uh, the pilot then went off without dropping a bomb, but then came back. And I see that there could be two possibilities. One was to check his map to make sure he had got the right place. The other thing was to radio base to say he was seeing all these children was he still to drop the bomb? Whatever happened, and for whatever reason, on his return bombing run, he actually flew over our house in Waters Road. And then when he dropped the bomb, my mother instinctively knew that the school had been hit. She bundled my young brother Eddie into an overcoat because it was a very cold day ran down the road to get to a bus and just praying that one would come quickly. My mother later told me that it did come quickly. And yet, though she said to the conductor who told the driver to go as quick as, she, as he could, because her school where her children were had been bombed. And she said, though the uh, bus did seem to go fast, it also seemed to drag. And she got to the corner where the bus drop, dropped passengers off and she walked up the couple of hundred yards to the corner where she could see the school. And then she could see the devastation that there was. The bomb had hit in the middle of the L-shaped building, just at the join of the two limbs. And that was right over the dining area where so many children were assembled having their lunchtime sandwiches, as I was. And Kitty was upstairs uh, and was just walking across the hall when she was stopped by the headmistress, Miss Clark, who wanted to chat to her about something or other. They heard part of a distant air raid warning. And Miss Clark said to Kitty, dash to the dining room and get all the children into the shelters. And she ran off to her office to sound the general alarm. And uh, Kitty had got down to the dining area. I, my position was fairly near the entrance. Oh. <clears throat> I saw her come in um, just as the teacher shouted to us, to get onto the tables and the bomb hit. And uh, I'd been excited up to that moment until I saw this school falling down on us. And then I realized what was happening. And uh, <clears throat> Kitty came running towards me and uh, all the rubble hit. To buy your copy of Adolf Hitler, His Bombers and Me to read alongside the series, go to ericbradybooks.co.uk. The Eric Brady Podcast can be found on YouTube, podcast services and at ericbrady.blogspot.com.